All right, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is still making her push to get rid of Mike Johnson as the speaker. Uh, she needs a little bit more support, even though a single congressman or woman can, can, can bring the speaker down or set the process in motion. She's not getting a lot of follow through right now from her colleagues. Uh, Congressman Mike Lawler is here, the New York Republican, the House Financial Services Committee, House Foreign Affairs Committee, Problem um, Solvers Caucus. He's a go to guy on all of this stuff. I'm happy that he got to us here. Um, good to see you, Congressman. Thanks for having Where me. Where is this push the speaker out thing going? Uh, I, I'm hopeful it's not going to go very far. Obviously, uh, you know, I wish my colleagues would have learned the lesson from last October when uh, eight. Uh, folks teamed up with 208 Democrats to remove Speaker McCarthy and threw the majority into chaos for three and a half weeks. Um, there is nothing but to Kevin be gained. But Kevin McCarthy doesn't speak ill of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I thought that was. A uh, they actually had a very good yeah. uh, working relationship, and she was supportive of Kevin. She agreed that it was idiotic to remove uh, Speaker no, McCarthy. I only say it because does, does that indicate that Kevin McCarthy shares the view that Mike Johnson? No, I don't, look. I think uh, former Speaker McCarthy understands uh, better than anyone yeah. uh, that the removal of the Speaker. Uh, not only does not serve the purpose, but it undermines the majority. Look, the voters elected a House Republican majority to govern, to serve as a check and balance on this disastrous Biden administration. But you from guys the have border. been even more disastrous. Right? We have people who have undermined yeah. uh, the conference, and it's certainly not helpful, and I don't think what Marjorie is doing right now is helpful. Uh, and it's not helping us with our majority. If you look at the map, I mean, Democrats thought they were going to uh, gerrymander New York's congressional maps. They tried to gerrymander yes, my did. district. It didn't work. My district stayed exactly the same. It's a district Biden won by 10 points. Uh, but we're doing very, very well in it. And so, but you know, we need to be able to, to hold be these so seats. crazy? And I, I could say on the extreme left the same thing. But in, in, in your party in particular, there is this idea that, that, that a few of the rebel rousers lead it. They have the loudest voices. They, yeah, I'm just wondering what, what, what happened. Well, I'll say uh, respectfully, not necessarily your show, uh, but many folks uh, do it because it gets them attention. It gets them notoriety. It gets them coverage on TV. But you're very it helps popular, them raise, very popular raise funds. in your district. I don't yep. mean to blow you smoke. You're a very calm, rational young guy. You've called out colleagues who go, you know, nuts right. um, and not suffered for it. No, because my district knows who I am, and, and I try to get the job done. I'm proud of the fact that the very first bill that I got signed into law was to create the special envoy for the Abraham Accords at a time we're dealing with uh, serious challenges in the Middle East. The Abraham Accords are going to be critical as we, as we move forward. And what do you so, think of this thing? We're, we're kind of dangling aid to Israel on the vine here. Uh, I think what Chuck Schumer did, uh, standing on the Senate floor a few weeks ago, what Nancy Pelosi is now doing, where they're basically trying to make Netanyahu the boogeyman, rather than focusing their ire on Hamas. If you want a ceasefire, the fastest way for that to occur is for Hamas to surrender and the hostages to be released. To somehow call for regime change in Israel uh, and dangle aid to Israel well, as part of Arafa that is shameful. invasion, whether it's justified or not, Congress and compound that talk. I mean, well, Benjamin Netanyahu has made it clear. I've set they, this date for this invasion, which apparently he was told, don't even do it, don't think about it, and he's going to do it. Well, look, Israel has a right to defend itself. What would the United States do if a country was threatening to eradicate our country? If, if you had Iran funding Hamas 93 percent of their budget, the greatest state sponsor of terror, China purchasing Iranian petroleum. It's what's helping fund all this. If you're being threatened, what are you supposed to do? You have to defend your country. You have to defend your citizens. Innocent Israelis and Americans were killed on October 7th. We still have American hostages being held. I did a press conference last week with the families of these hostages. They want their loved ones released. Hamas has had multiple opportunities to agree to a ceasefire and release the hostages, and yet again, you think Hamas they, knows they refused. Where these hostages are that they were I think, siphoned off to all these terror groups. They they can't even account for them. I think that is a big concern. When yeah. I was in Israel back in November after the attack, uh, you know, our embassy had concern about where all of the hostages were, and it's not just Hamas holding them, and so that is obviously of concern. As they still cannot account for all these people, we still have no proof of life or safety uh, and, and well-being. And so this is, this is a real challenge. And so when you're trying to negotiate terms here, how do you negotiate with someone that wants to eradicate the state of Israel and refuses to cooperate with the release of innocent civilians? 
Wild stuff. Um, Congressman, very good seeing you. Thank you for your calm demeanor in these crazy times. Uh, Mike Lawler of the beautiful state of New York.